with all due respect, Travis, you don't represent us, and I would like to hear yeah. Leslie talk about these um, issues. I'm happy. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I appreciate it. And, yes. and um, I, Themis is exactly right. I haven't been here over the last years, but since I've been there, we have sat in caucuses and talked about those things. And she's also right that it's our job to try to convince our counterparts to stop spending, stop raising taxes, stop spending, so we can balance the budget. Stop spending where? Yeah, exactly. Well, we have to go. I said to someone the other day, I what said, are you uh, stop spending on. Well, we have to go through budget by budget. I know I work at St. Mary's Hospital, and they'll say to me, Leslie, you're not getting any more money. And I literally go line item by line item through my budget to see what I can cut. Because I believe maybe there's some places where you cannot cut, because I know you have to spend money, but I do think maybe there are some places you can cut. So you have to find where those places are. If we don't cut, it's just going to continue to spend and our taxes are going to continue to go up. And I don't think anybody, I was just talking to someone here tonight, and I've heard it over and over. If we don't stop, this is the worst state to retire in. You know, the retirees are getting killed with taxes. Um, as a, a family of four, we're, I'm getting killed in taxes. How do you, you have to work to continue to pay your taxes. And after a while, you can't do it anymore. So when I was out talking to people, they would say, if it wasn't for my grandkids, I would leave this state. If it wasn't for um, my kids, as soon as they get into college, I'm leaving. Or my house is for sale. Or houses are empty. Well, who's going to be left here? So um, we do have to, and I've seen it in our caucus, that we do come together on a bill. I haven't been through that experience yet because we haven't done it since I've been in the House yet. I wasn't in December able to go up to the special session and vote on the budget that had to be closed. Um, but going forward, we do have budget workshops and those things. And we have to see where we can cut. If we don't, it's going to keep going up. I mean, that's, that's the issue. We heard about Governor Malloy wanting to get on gap accounting and also to be more transparent. And since he's been in there, I mean, I can't, I try and watch Connecticut C-SPAN and I can't for the life of me figure out what they're doing, what they're spending, if they're stealing from the, the catch-up funds for the uh, state employees retirement fund. And, it, and it's just a mess. It just looks like they're shuffling money and stealing it and, and there's no answer. Oh, trying I don't to run. think it's being stealing. stolen. That's so absurd. I, I, I have a mis misappropriated. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, that brings up a subject that I wanted to talk about tonight, and that is the general fund. Now, uh, for instance, there, there's been talk about the, uh, installing tolls on the roads mm -hmm. because they don't think there's enough money <laughs> for the maintenance of the road. But we, we pay a lot of taxes when we buy a gallon of gas. And I've seen trucks with signs on the back saying, we pay $41,000, whatever, in taxes so we can use this road. And so there's a lot of money going to Hartford for roads. But of course, we don't know how much and where it goes because it goes into the general fund. We, the people that are paying the taxes, well, the first, there's, there's no transparency, all right? And then there's absolutely no traceability. We have no idea where the money's coming from, how much is coming from the casinos for education or the, the, the monies that are paid for roads. It goes into the general fund and, and we lose all sight of it. And so we can't take a position, we can't voice an opinion because we're totally in the dark. And I, and I one of the reasons why I came here is to recommend that a movement be made to get rid of the general fund. Ella Grasso in, initiated it about, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago or so. But it's, it's terrible. It, 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 the the, the uh, taxpayer is in the dark completely. They want you. And I can understand this gentleman's position. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Where's the money going? Is there a way that you can go somewhere and find the budget? The budget is a public document. Yeah, so I mean, the, when the budget uh, comes out in um, the budget is a public document. next week, the governor will be presenting his budget. And uh, after he presents his budget, then the appropriations committee presents their budget at some, about, you know, within a month after that. And all that information is public as, as to that. And then at, at some point between now and June, that will hey, be Ms. done. You have been emailing me things for a while now. And uh, they are a treasure trove 
of legalese and uh, and, and you have to be have a, an MBA in, in economics to be able to decipher a lot of that stuff. I would like to see something that is simple and straightforward and it says we collected so much money in taxes for roads and, and it's not enough so we're going to take some money from here and, and, and build the roads. Or, or we get so much money from the casinos and for, it, to, to go toward education, but it's not enough, so we're going to take money from here. In other words, I would like to know where it's coming from and where it's going. And I don't want to read a budget because I'm sure I wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So did you sign up for email? Did you, do you have email, sir? Oh, okay. uh, the thing is, it's mine. Oh, my, okay. I'll, I'll send my Okay, email. yeah, and just make sure you put it on right. here. And um, I, I have to, um, I'm only smiling because I, those big terminology, and I'll say to somebody, okay, speak in my terms, because <laughs> I don't understand them either. Um, because you do need to understand where everything is going and what's it doing and how it all plays out. So, I think. Um, that's a question for them since she's the experienced one. Um, you said the budget, the House, uh, the um, um, Republican caucus put out their own budget and they made significant cuts or they, you, they made cuts where you thought appropriate. Can you share some of those specifics with us? Well, I mean, I'll, to be honest with you, we've done six and one to each one Example. Sure. The example is, cuts okay, well, one of the things was, was the consolidations of commissions and agencies and all those things where there's like 30 of them and we consolidate consolidated them into 10 because each one of them has their own secretary and executive director and own office space and own you know all fax machine and computers and everything else things like that so that was one place where okay things were cut but it didn't cut anybody's services you know another example was you know and I don't I don't want to get technical because to be honest with you the appropriation stuff isn't exactly my favorite part of my job you know, I enjoy the Public Health Committee, I enjoy the Judiciary Committee, so I will explain it to you in the best way that I know how. Medicaid fraud in this country is, is huge, okay, is, is a <coughs> huge number. And that's a perfect example of where we put savings in and nobody loses anything. Because it's not taking any benefits away from anybody who is supposed to get the benefits. But they estimate, even in Connecticut, almost a billion dollars in Medicaid fraud. Who's the they? The, 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 medi the, the health groups, it's not a partisan thing. It's, it's the, I don't, I don't know the organization that actually. But who would oppose that? Who would oppose having that? As well, that's a very good question. You know, they, they estimate that for every one person that we hire that just does Medicaid fraud within the state, the, the, I believe the federal government gives us 75 cents on the dollar to pay for that. Um, and each one of those people bring, you could bring in like a million dollars. Um, you know, I'm estimating, I don't, I'm, you know, I could get you the specific numbers. But exactly, I don't know why anybody would... Well, it doesn't make any sense because that was in the Democratic platform. Well, I'll tell you why, though. I mean, you want me to tell you my feeling? Sure, sure. Um, my feeling? Absolutely. Because a lot of legislators that represent the big cities, that's where a lot of that Medicaid fraud is going on, and they don't want to take it away from their... I mean, that may not be a politically correct thing to say, but that's, those are the people that aren't supporting it. Why you know? does anybody support fraud? I agree with you. And that's illegal. And who said I agree. they are? I mean, you're just throwing the terms No, I'm not. It's, they're not my terms. They're protecting it's, it's, their it's, voters. It's, it's a national problem. It's not a problem that's just in Connecticut. It's in every state, and it's a national well, problem. Well, we're asking about Connecticut. I mean, well, I mean exactly. Obama got hammered because of that $716 million, billion dollar, uh, cut in, in uh, Medicare, which was fraud and abuse. Mm -hmm. And... So now, if it was in the Democratic platform and it it's, was on their plan, why would any Democrats in Connecticut um, not support I, I, You know, I can't answer. I don't know why some of my colleagues vote one way or the other way. I just think that certain of our constituencies avail themselves of different programs more than others. And I think that, you know, I think that they know that a lot of their constituents have it. I don't think that they're consciously saying, I support fraud. You know, because obviously that would be illegal and that wouldn't be. But, but I think that they, you know, they look and they say, well, let's, we'll work on that a little bit. We won't get, we won't go 100% into it because who knows what we're going to find. I mean, I think unfortunately that's what happens in government sometimes. And I think that's why we all talk about government should be, should be run like a business more. Because, you know, government would be bankrupt in six months if it were run like a business. 
And even in our assistance programs, um, there was a number that came out from a research, the research group at the Capitol, who's bipartisan. And the fraud in our assistance programs, it was 15%, which equals hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So if we could just tackle that issue, you know. The thing is that the oversight committees that are part of this maybe consolidation plan of let's eliminate some of the overhead in administrative costs is what d investigates this fraud. So if you eliminate those those bodies out of the the uh, oversight boards, then you have fewer people to investigate fraud, and therefore more fraud continues to go on. This is why I'd love to see specifics about the Republican budget, because I think that while it sounds great that you cut because you, you want to live like, like our parents did with uh, balancing the budget and, and only spending as much as you have to spend and doing without when you need to, that everybody in this room would disagree with something on that oh, plan absolutely. because we all think something uh, unique to us or special to us is important. No, no, and so no for question. you not to be publishing that, that bill, that, that proposal, um, well, it's not being kept secret. I mean, we have we have press conferences. We do press on it. It's it's available. You know, it, it, when when any bill that is voted on in the legislature, you can get a copy of. Well, you know, this and when we have to the floor, though, this yeah, is, it, it, this is the the House uh, caucus. Right, but proposal. we put it in we put it in a bill form. Oh, you do. Okay. Right. And, you know, I mean, and to be honest with you, sometimes they let us vote on it. Sometimes they don't. But it's you know, it's still a document that we. It's not like we kind of make it up in our head and we just talk about bits and pieces, and no question about it. I mean, there are parts of it I don't like. I mean, when you have a, a document that's, you know, 300 pages or 400 pages, there's more than one thing in it I don't like. You know, it's, and it's not an easy job, but it's the job that we do. And does that mean certain things, you know, are not exactly where you want them? Of course they're not, but you have to somehow, it's like a negotiation. You have to move a little here, move a little there, and then somehow try and get to the result that you need. Who does the state have that investigates Medicare fraud? At the federal level, there, there, is, a, there is a group that, that does that something. We, we have a Medicaid it. fraud unit. But yes, I mean. I believe, it's, I believe it's in the um, chief state's attorney's office, I believe. It, it has to, the, you have to have regulation mm -hmm. to control that sort of thing. Nobody, nobody likes being regulated, but you have to tell some <coughs> hospital or doctors, sorry, you have submitted a bill that is not correct. I, 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 like I said, I believe it's in the Chief State's Attorney's Office. Somebody has to be paid to do sure. that job. Mm -hmm. The people are paid to do it, but the argument is there's so much out there that the more people we hire, the more we can uncover. First, you have to have a, a, minimal, a minimal task force to do it. I'm sure that Well, it's, it's being done now. It's just with, with hundreds of million dollars available, I mean, that's not done by 10 people. You know, to search those people out, and there's people that are trained to do that. And like I said, I believe it's 75 cents on the dollar that the federal government would pay us for each person we hire to do that. I mean, I'd be happy to get you any other specifics. Are they in? Are they in the judicial end or not? Well, they're in the chiefs, the, the investigators. Yes. They're in the chief state's attorney's office. They're in the chief attorney's office. The, the prosecutor's office, yes. Like I said, I'm I'm 95 percent sure. Find the information first before they can prosecute. Of course. Well, that's what the investigators do. They investigate and figure out who's doing what. And they need some extra support for what the state needs. Mm -hmm. Because that is an area where there is, we know there's fraud. When you propose a budget, would that not be on your uh, website, which is what, HouseRepublicans.org mm -hmm. or something like that? I mean, for the other people that want to know where the budget might be. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, to be honest, I, I don't know if, if we put the whole thing right on there because it's several hundred pages. Right, but yeah, we, we, it, yeah. right, we propose it and we, we do press conferences and we talk, we answer every question anybody asks about what's in it, what's not in it. Um, and like I said, if, if when we try to get it called as a bill, right. it's in a bill form. Because I usually look at that site to right. uh, get information. And, and if there's something on the site that you don't find that you need, you just call one of us, you know, call Leslie, right. her office will right. get that for you. Right. Right. Yeah. 